Hello, welcome to Go Library. This is Dr. Ming. We continue our program, Morris Moxie, talking about the CCP's accomplices in the U.S. The questions are: How have the American elites in Washington, Silicon Valley, and Wall Street, as well as business associations, human rights organizations, and world-class universities, sold out America to the CCP? What made Wara write about Google kowtowing to the CCP in 2008? How has the Americans' political sentiment towards the CCP changed? Over to Mora. No. Billionaire elites, yeah, yeah, take the side、yes. of the CCP, and many, many, many of our politicians、yes. who've been bought by the CCP and take CCP money happily with no shame at all. No, and they, those same elites, those American elites, sold out the American people when they shipped all their jobs to communist China. Yeah,、Here、we will talk、America. about yes. Yeah, we talk about the headquarters of IBM, international、yeah. business machines. It started the first generation of personal computers. Yeah, and it had Corning, and it had Kolo, Kodak, and Polaroid, and all of these tech companies. They're、okay. all gone. And what do we have instead in upstate New York? Instead of research laboratories and and thriving communities, we have fentanyl. We have、okay. broken communities. We have broken lives. I was shocked when I went to Poughkeepsie a couple of years ago, where Vassar College is. Again, I, IBM used to be a big big employer there. In the middle of the day, I saw so many grown men passed out on the main street with needles in their arms. From the opioid crisis, and I saw all of the main streets for sale, for rent, or broken down, and people doing crack cocaine. In what twenty, thirty years ago was a thriving community, is now a broken shell. And we also know that fentanyl is coming from communist China、yes. through cartels in Mexico.、Mm-hmm. But we also don't see the elites coming to the defense of the American people. They're coming to、no. the defense of the CCP as their fellow countrymen die. Three a minute in New York, probably、yeah. four. It's oh, it's going to be a hundred thousand deaths by the weekend, according to projections by doctors. So I had an idea that I wanted to share with you and your and your listeners. Yeah, this is a, basically、um, we now move to the topic of the CCP's accomplices in the U, U in the U.S. Yeah,、mm-hmm. so we must yeah, there's lots of things to explore. So my question, so, um. What what is the view about this?、Uh, so you talk about yes, uh, uh, this、uh, CCP's accomplices.、Mm-hmm. So how they affect your、uh, community? So w- what is the book you are going to share with us? Which is a good one. <laughs> oh yes, it's now sold out. My、oh, friend、wow. Rosemary Gibson wrote this wonderful book called China RX.、Mm, what does that mean? RX of America's dependence on China for medicine. All right,、uh, and、uh, this book came out in 2018,、mm-hmm. and typically, no one would put Rosemary on their talk shows. Nobody would interview her. Steve Bannon put her up on、uh, War Room Pandemic, and now, now that the lockdown has come, now that people are traumatized, that now that people are dying and people have lost their jobs and they've lost their security and their pensions, the book sold out.、Mm. And the book tells the story of how it started with Bill Clinton in 1994, when he gave Communist China permanent normal trading relations,、mm-hmm. and then got them into the WTO. Yeah, All yeah. of our medical supplies got outsourced mostly to China. The last penicillin factory in the United States was in Syracuse, New York,、mm-hmm. in upstate New York, and it closed in 2004. So very soon we're going to see shortages of urgently needed medical supplies, not just masks, not just gowns, aspirin, penicillin、mm. that you give your children if they have an ear infection, heparin for heart operations, and we've seen what they've done in Australia in the last couple of months.、Uh, I know you've reported very well on the story of a CCP businessman who bought up all of these private hospitals in Australia. Closed、yeah. as the pandemic started, shipped millions of masks and personal protective gear back to China. Same happened in America. Yeah, it involves the hard to get production. Go ahead and die. The message is: Go ahead and die. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed.、Mm-hmm.
Yes, um, that's a very good book. Uh, and also, if it's possible, uh, could you introduce her to me? I can, I'd like to interview her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes, because I think that's a very, you know, very relevant um, topic to address in terms of how, um, in terms of uh, when Clinton administration allowed Chinese, uh, th th sorry, th China to enter the WTO, then just in less than four years, you know, mm -hmm. your uh, supply chain for the medical projection uh, almost move most of them starting or almost half of them already moved to China oh, yeah. so yeah so and now you can even do not produce the basic medicines and that's not the the worst you know what in China there are so many scandals about these um, you know fake medicines <laughs> the vaccines yeah for children it's terrible it's terrible mm -hmm. so yes. and Yes. So, uh, well, you well, think no, about well, how can the American trust the Chinese uh, uh, medicines? Yeah, producing that way. So, because it, it's all corruption, mm -hmm. and uh, those big, uh, say, pharmaceuticals, they are agents of the CCP. They certainly so, appear to be, don't they? So, here's you, another book I'd like yeah. to share with your viewers. This one is called Chinese. Business etiquette. Let me put it over here so you can see it. Wow. Chinese <laughs> business <laughs> etiquette. etiquette. And the man, um, uh, Scott D. Seligman, is the author. Mm. But one of his uh, blurbs comes from a man called Mr. James McGregor, who lives in Shanghai, mm. who used to run Amchang Shanghai. Amchang means American Chamber of Commerce. The Amchang Shanghai Twitter feed has always been the most blatant and naked display of the elite's preference for China's one-party communist dictatorship over what they call our messy democracy. They've really toned it down since the lockdown happened, but don't worry, guys, I've got screenshots, I've been following you, and I have a file with all the things you've said, the outrageous outrageous things that you've said about the Chinese people and about the American people. Well, here's a good one from Mr. James McGregor that he uh, said in an interview at the end of January when everyone in the elite in China knew full well that this yeah. pandemic was raging out of Wuhan and they let everybody travel for Lunar New Year, which was January 15th. Yeah. Oh, January 29th, Mr. McGregor gave an interview where he was saying, Oh, it's, we've done such a great job relocating the American supply chain to China, and we're, we have bigger plans to have for the future. And all this talk about the concentration camps in Xinjiang is so much blather. Mm. So much blather. What if it was his mother, his father, his child, or himself being tortured in a commun communist uh, concentration camp for the crime of practicing your religion? or expressing your ethnic identity. He, mm. he doesn't care about human life. I would like no. all these leads to go and spend a day in a Chinese concentration camp and then tell us how terrific it was. So much blather. Well, yes, that's about the uh, American uh, Chamber of Commerce in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. Oh, there are lots of stories. Follow you can them, feed. Yes, yes. Follow them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mm, uh, would you like to talk about the those um, bankers in the Wall Street? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, have you? So, uh, for example, tell you uh, tell tell us your writing about Google. Oh wow, that's that's uh, Silicon okay. Valley, yeah, and the CCP in two thousand eight. So, what made you write it? You talk about you, you yeah. You publish an article about. Question. Th thank you for asking these 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 very straightforward questions. Because why did I write it? Because it was shocking, and it was morally reprehensible, mm. and it was outrageous. Okay. And uh, I, I, to see that what happened was executives from Yahoo and Google and Bill Gates's Microsoft. Don't forget Big Bill Gates. CCP collaborator number one. Oh, sorry, Tim Cook, uh, and also um, Bill Cl Bill Clinton. Uh, 
They were hauled before a congressional committee to explain why they were collaborating with the Chinese Communist Party, why they were doing technology transfers with the Chinese Communist Party, and why they were censoring content that the yeah. Chinese Communist Party felt was sensitive. Yes. Like those, those pesky concentration camps in Tibet and Xinjiang. And, uh, and they basically waffled, you know, they took the Fifth Amendment and they just kept on doing it because most politicians have been bought and sold by the same Wall Street criminals who sold us out to the CCP, who mm -hmm. wine and dine Xi Jinping, Hu Jintao, Li Peng, Jiang Zemin, all these characters, whenever they come to town, they get a red carpet, they get a mm -hmm. banquet. Mark Zuckerberg is always there. Bill Gates is there. Uh, everybody's smiling for her. But the poor Dalai Lama, the poor, His Holiness Dalai Lama, mm -hmm. in 2009, President Obama declined to meet with the Dalai Lama. He was the first president since George H.W. Bush first met with the Dalai Lama to refuse to receive him in the White House from Chinese pressure and also because his Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, insisted upon it because mm -hmm. she so tight with the CCP. And then uh, Obama realized his folly when the CCP double crossed him at the Copenhagen Climate Summit. Mm -hmm. So he did agree to meet the Dalai Lama, but it was through the back door and the photograph that went around the world was the Dalai Lama going by the trash in the White House. Not good optics. Xi Jinping comes, oh ho ho ho. He gets a red carpet and the fine wine, and everyone wants their picture taken with him. Mm. Well, it's not going to be a very good look now when you've got tens of thousands of Americans whose lives have been destroyed by the CCP virus. So I think this is a very critical moment. Back to your question about yeah. these elites. Here's an idea that I came up with many, many years ago, and I abandoned it because in the Tibet movement, the problem we have is we have no resources. No one will fund us. You can't get a penny to do any serious work about Tibet. Believe me, I've tried. You'd be able to get like a little consultancy here, maybe a one month funding there on a writing assignment here or there, whatever, but not enough to really take on the most powerful people in our society who have empowered the, the, the criminals who hold hostage the 1.4 million billion people in China. Mm. You know, you need resources to do this. And we never had any. We just, all we had was moral outrage and we were relentless. I used to say that the Tibet activists, we were like um, squirrels. We're little, <laughs> we're small, but we have sharp teeth. And it's our job to chip, 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 chip away at their narrative. And one day, maybe the tree will fall down. And if somebody didn't do something, that would be shameful and a disgrace. Well, at least somebody did something. At least my, myself and students for a free Tibet, we were out there every time a Chinese dictator came to town with our Tibetan flags, chanting China lies, people die. And which side are you on, boys? That's the question I'd like to ask these Wall Street elites. Yeah. You can see them very nervous right now. They're very nervous. The AmCham Shanghai guys, you watch their Twitter feed, they're trying to walk it back a little bit. Sorry. Sorry, we've got, we have the record. We have a record. I've been keeping record and I've got files. Yeah, the technology companies, yes, they have. Mm -hmm. Sorry? I, I, sorry, I say, uh, you're talking about the technology companies really help the CCP, yeah. They censor the internet, on the internet. Yeah. Anything that uh, would uh, displease the CCP, they will try to, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to cover it up. Yeah, that's the technology. And also the Wall Street, the bankers, they, they, they got so much, you know, uh, money to, to, to fund the CCP. And that's Wall Street and also these this politicians. Mm -hmm. So uh, specifically, what is your view about, for example, like, uh, uh, um, uh, like, the, like the, the, the big VIPs like uh, Bloomberg and uh, Schwarzman? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you must have lots of things to talk about. Absolutely. I grew up with these people. Oh, wow. I know them intimately. Mm. I've met almost all of them. Mm. Uh, I've never met uh, Mark Zuckerberg um, or Tim Cook, but I know exactly who and what they are. Mm. 
And I, th I think this is this goes back to what my project was. My project was to create a truth pledge and send it to all of these people who outsourced American jobs and American medicine to China, communist China, which is probably going to end up with a lot of people dying because they won't be able to get penicillin in the next few months because mm -hmm. you can't rebuild these factories right away. It's going to take time to bring all the factories back from America. Forget about shoes, forget about clothes. It's, it's high tech, it's Boeing, it's medicines. It's technology. Let's not even get into weapon systems, which have also mm. been sent over to the P PRC. Why? God knows. But so I wrote a truth pledge one night. I think it was around the time I went and I stood in front of the Xinhua Tower when it was first unveiled to the public. Yeah. And the truth pledge basically said, do you acknowledge that the Chinese Communist Party is responsible for the deaths of 80 million of its own people? Yeah. Do you acknowledge that you saw the carnage in Tiananmen Square? Do you acknowledge that the Dalai Lama is a refugee in India because the Chinese Communist Party invaded his country, killed 1.5, maybe 2 million Tibetans? Do you acknowledge that there are at least 1.5, some figures say two, some figures say 5 million human beings in concentration camps in Xinjiang? I'm now adding to the truth pledge for a recent history. And I updated it over the uh, last Christmas to add Hong Kong. Do you acknowledge that the CCP is violating the one country, two systems pledge that they made to the people of Hong Kong? And do you acknowledge that there is police brutality in Hong Kong that shocks the conscience of mankind? Do mm -hmm. you? And I would like to send it to all of them. So how, we, we need a big backer for this to see if they answer us or not. I have a feeling that, you know, it's always with us Tibet people. No, it's not convenient. We can't meet you today. You know, they couldn't, they couldn't completely slam the door in my face because I was the daughter of a very powerful senator. That's exactly. the only thing I had going for me. And so I was relentless. I would just, I knocked on every single door. I went to every humanitarian organization. I went to every human rights organization. I lobbied senators again and again. But after my father died, to my face, I was told by every single humanitarian organization, these aren't even the bankers. These are people whose mission statement is to help the students in Hong Kong who've been beaten viciously by the police or the Tibetan refugees who escaped, mm. uh, you know, like, like my friend Palin Gatsu. And we're going to mm. talk about this. We're going to talk yeah. about this later. Um, yeah. And, um, the, you know, and to my face, they said, we can't work with you, Mora. You're a Tibet person, and our board members have interests in China. Yeah. Now, uh, I was told that by Human Rights Watch, yeah. Human Rights First, Freedom House, all these organizations. So I would say to them, are you telling me that you're siding with a totalitarian dictatorship that tortures children in concentration camps mm. over His Holiness Dalai Lama, mm. the Nobel Peace Prize laureate and the greatest Buddhist master of our time? Is that what you're telling me? Mm. And you know what they would do? They wouldn't answer. They would. No, that's a difficult say, question. Well, they're they making them ashamed. Yeah. They should say, Maura, you got a point. At least one older man at Freedom House, which was created by Eleanor Roosevelt after oh, yeah. World War II. Let's remember yes. most of these organizations were created after the Holocaust, after the catastrophe of the Nazi control of Europe and World War II, in which six million European Jews were slaughtered in concentration camps. And today people are tortured in CCP concentration camps with methods of cruelty that would make a Nazi proud. I have spent years interviewing mostly Tibetans, but Uyghur and Chinese friends as well, who survived, somehow survived being in a Chinese prisoner concentration camp. Again, arrested for counter-revolutionary thought like Dr. Li and Liu Jabo. So I would like, I think now we have an opportunity to do things like this truth pledge, to at least embarrass and shame and expose the collaborators. I know yeah. that with Mr. Guo, one thing you do is the expose revolution. Yes. Which I think is wonderful. Yeah. Which is we wonderful. shame them and name them. Yes. Name them and shame them. Shame them. Yes. Shame them and name them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, a question. So, according to your personal experience, how has the political sentiment towards the CCP changed over the years? 
I've never seen it change so fast than it has since the pandemic forced the lockdown of our great cities. Oh, and right. it's taking away people we love three per minute. Mm. I'm now getting phone calls from friends, thoughtful, intelligent people, educated people, sophisticated New Yorkers and people I knew. I used to also live in Boston and Washington. I'm an, I'm, I'm an East Coast. I'm, I, I come from the East Coast elite. So these are educated people, thoughtful people. And for years and years, they'd roll their eyes. Oh, Maura, come on. You know, if Bill Gates says it's okay to work with China, if Bill Clinton says it's okay to work with China, if Steve Schwartzman started the uh, Schwartzman Scholars, and sa he said about three years ago on uh, public television, he was committing $100 million to train the future leaders of the Chinese Communist Party. Well, American kids get saddled with debt for going to college, but if you're Chinese Communist, it's easier to get into Harvard Princeton and Yale. Xi yeah. Jinping's daughter, by the way, went to Harvard as an undergraduate. She was in class of 2014, but they also gave her a pseudonym and Harvard totally collaborated with this. And a friend of mine who is a uh, was an admissions counselor at Princeton and later at Harvard said, if your father is a Chinese communist, it's much easier to get into a top college than if your grandfather built that college. That's the situation. So back to what your question was. I'm sorry, I got a little off topic. Uh, people are calling me in tears saying, Maura, you were right. You were right. You were right about China. I'm sorry I didn't listen more. I'm sorry I didn't pay attention more. But Maura, I'm really glad you did bring it to my attention because at least it was sort of in the back of my mind that something's wrong here. It's not quite right. Yeah, yeah. But this is a, such a high price to pay. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, for them to learn it finally. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's too high. It is too high. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and thank you so much. So we talk about the CCP's accomplices. 